Welcome back to All Things Money. We're going to wrap up uh, some of the lessons from last decade. Um, first of all, uh, we believe that massive diversification of the portfolio is the way to go. Things like stocks, bonds, uh, commodities, um, maybe some cash in the portfolio, real estate, all these types of diversification. Second thing is don't try to chase the uh, hottest fads. There are um, money management does evolve and we help you keep uh, up with those changes in money management. And you have to keep your portfolio fine-tuned to make sure that it's, um, it's exposing you to the amount of risk that you're comfortable with. Um, but essentially, our advice is unchanged, that you want to uh, find a long-term strategy you can live with um, and stick with it. Uh, there are certain strategies that have worked over many of years, um, and we think that they will continue to work into the future. Um, so one of the things that one of the other lessons that kind of a corollary to that is um, when you're retiring, uh, it's very critical when you're retiring to allocate your funds correctly. As we learned from the last uh, 10 years that stock market returns are not always positive. Uh, there were ways, like I mentioned before, going overseas, some real estate in the portfolio, some things like that, that you could achieve returns. But we're talking about when people are retiring or starting to withdraw money from their portfolio, the most critical thing is that first year when they start to retire. That um, we, look, we did some studies and that um, if, if a person, a hypothetical person with a million dollar portfolio uh, retires and takes out $60,000 a year inflation adjusted, if the first year they lose 45% of their money, which would be the equivalent of 2008, they had it all in stocks, um, they will run out of money in year 16, even if they make 14% a year for the next 16 years. So what I'm driving at is when you're going into retirement, uh, the first years of that retirement are very critical, and we advocate being a little bit more conservative than, than normal because if you have large losses in the portfolio, it's very difficult to make, make that up. Um, and so we would rather see people be a little bit more conservative going into retirement. And if things work out better, they can up their spending level um, in the future. But the math, if you do the math, the mathematics are just against you if you have um, very poor years uh, initially. And, other, and, and when we add... Uh, bonds into this portfolio, the results become much better uh, having a more conservative mix heading into retirement. So it's not so much the uh, risk tolerance of the investor or um, it, it's just simply the mathematics. You cannot afford to have big losses early in the retirement uh, stage. As you move on into the years and, and you can afford to take uh, a little bit more risk, in fact, as the retirement stretches out over longer periods of time, the biggest risk we see is retirees not taking enough risk in the portfolio. As I mentioned in the previous segment, 100% fixed income is not the way to go either. Uh, you can almost guarantee that after inflation and tax, you will run out of money with an entire, entirely fixed income portfolio. Um, one, uh, one of our longtime readers in uh, Fairfield Harbor uh, sent us a question here that said, I noted that I'm always stressing diversification and investments and wants to know how much is enough. And that's a great question. Uh, everyone's needs are different, but there's some general rules of thumb that you should consider. And um, keep in mind that diversification and asset allocation are two related but different things. And so when we talk about asset allocation, uh, we diversifying your money across asset classes. We're talking about putting some money into stocks, some money into bonds, some money into real estate, some money into commodities, possibly some money into cash. And so that is a form of diversification. Um, as, as reminded from the Talmud from thousands of years ago, where they put one-third of their money into uh, land, one-third of their money into a business, and one-third of their money into, into gold coins. That is the broad diversification across asset classes. Now, when, once we get into the asset classes themselves, it's also prudent to diversify. 
And by that, uh, when we break it down into, let's say, um, in the bond market, you can diversify amongst, uh, say, government bonds, uh, corporate bonds, uh, treasury inflation protected bonds. There are different types of bonds that react differently to different types of economic scenarios. And that's what we're talking about, diversification. If I could sum it up in one simple sentence, diversification is investing in different things that move differently in response to different economic stimulus. So, for example, if you have all U.S. Um, companies and you say, well, I own Microsoft and Cisco and Intel and Apple and IBM, uh, you know, I'm diversified. I've got six companies in my portfolio. And I would say, no, that, no, you're not, because they're all, the ones I just named, they're all in the technology arena. And they all are going to move very similarly, either up or down, in response to various economic stimulus, either uh, inflation or recession, but they're all going to kind of move the same. That's not diversification. Diversification, we want things that move differently. So, for example, typically uh, we have... Um, long-term bonds move in the opposite direction of stocks. And so bonds typically counteract declines in the stock market, especially treasury bonds. Uh, corporate bonds, although they are a good diversification of stocks, are not quite the same diversification as government bonds. And so when we look at diversification, you want to make sure that things are moving differently. The easiest way to do this is either to look at returns, I mean, go back to um, a, a year that was really good for stocks and look and see what did really poorly. Look for a really poor year in stocks and see what did really well. That's a very simple way to determine if, this, uh, if your portfolio is diversified. A more sophisticated way is what we call the correlation co coefficient. And you look at um, it's a mathematical calculation, and you can get it at various websites on the Internet, and you could see that the correlation, say, between the U.S. stock market and government treasury bonds is essentially zero, meaning that when stocks go up, uh, bonds you know, do not necessarily go up. In fact, they probably go down. What you're looking for is negatively correlated assets, things that if stocks are going up, they may go down, but if stocks are going down, that they actually go up. And this is what we mean by diversification, finding negatively correlated assets for the portfolio. Well, that's all the time we have for this edition of All Things Money. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Uh, please visit us on the web at www.dlblaine.com. Until next week, this is David Blaine for All Things Money. The proceeding was a paid program. The opinions expressed are not necessarily those of WNBU and Interbanks Media.